Oh, we started cover crops the very first year. The next spring, we seeded into those cover crop strips. And then since then, oh, last fall, I probably had 1,500 acres of cover crops we had put in behind the soybeans. This is something I think I started. Uh, my sons are both looking at it, but no, they're both worth with me 100%. I think with the new generations, the new millennium to work with, the different food that they're gonna want is all connected into this style of farming. Those cover crops mainly consisted of, of rye, and the cereal rye gives me the green root to drive on in the spring. That helps me to get my crop in in a wetter year or in a drier year. For any producer trying to get into cover crops or using them, you know, the talk we have is the gateway is the cereal rye. It's a very simple one to start with, and it's a very easy one to control if you think it's out of control. The roots from the rye do more than any tillage piece of equipment could ever do. We had some sunflower strips, cover crops that I did this year. In those six strips, there was 29 different species that we tried. There were six people that had recommendations to plant at the same time as seeding the sunflowers. And so we did that. One plot was on rye stubble. The other plot was on teff grass stubble. I didn't know what peas would do, and I didn't know what dwarf would do, and I didn't know what this would do, and I didn't know what this looked like. So we individualized those to start with. You know, what can it do? That's not worth doing. This looks good. That's how I've kind of determined some of the ones that I wanted to pick out. So that leads you to, you know, doing three or four different things because maybe two of the four wouldn't have done nothing. If those two are what you had chosen for that year, you would have gotten no results. Uh, the biggest management we do with the cover crops is to try and leave a green one for spring. Um, we do spread our trash behind the combines with a large straw drag to make sure we get an even spread of all the straw and the chaff equally. And the cover crops or the volunteers behind the combine are left to grow. That's my free cover crop. The cover crops are in there are being used for the weed management, also for produce a little nitrogen fertilizer for us, but it becomes a haven for the good insects, for the good bugs. We need the good bugs to get rid of the bad bugs. And Mother Nature will do that if you can give her some help to start with. This fall will tell because we did not do any bug spraying there. Now, later on this fall, when we desiccate, we will not desiccate those strips. We will not kill them strips either. We'll let them go their full meal deal because I want to know what those strips are like next spring. The cover crops now have give, given us oh, more uniformity. We used to have a lot of nuisance potholes that were 100 feet in diameter. Those are all gone now. We have more consistency and uh, we had several test plots in there and it have done some sense. And everything we do, the test plots show an advantage. You know, I'm not losing any money, treating my soil, the earthworms are starting to show up. We now have some beneficial bugs when we're doing cover crops. The thing about the cover crops is you just gotta try it. Don't try the whole farm, try a corner, try a handful. Put it in your garden. I think you'll be amazed at what can happen in no time benefit to you.